Oh, a little bit of a actual electrical contact instead of me spouting bollocks all the time. Yeah, go on then. This is a contactor and it looks virtually brand new. And I'm going to show you where it's from and we'll see if we can work out what's been going off together. I, I already know, so you're, I'm taking it on for the ride, you know what I mean? This is sort of a reconstruction, but yeah. Brand new contact's not working, but why? See if anyone can work anything out from that. Right, let's go look at the panel. One minute on contacts, in case you don't know what they are. This is a contactor. They come in all sorts of different flavours and sizes. You'll see on there, there is one set of terminals labelled A1 and A2. That is the coil. That is the thing we're going to talk about in a minute. You'll see one set and they're labelled NO. That is a normally open switch. And then you'll see the other ones are labelled L1, L2, L3. They're the ins. And T1, T2, T3, they're the outs. All it is is a three-phase electromechanical switch. You put three phase in here, here, and here. And when you energise the coil, it comes out here, here, and here. The coil voltage is a magnet that pulls the switches closed. It's as simple as that. And those core voltages come in different flavours. 12, 24, 48, 110, fucking anything you want, really. You can get them all. And then the only other thing you've got on there is you've got the normally open contact. That enables you to use it as what they call a dole starter. That's the most common contact you require. So yeah, the normally open contact, if you require more contacts, for example, you want a normally open contact that told you if the contact was in or out, you can stick a thing on the front of these called an auxiliary block, which gives you more control contacts. So you've got your L1, L2, L3 going through, they're your power contacts. You've got your NO, which is a control contact, and you've got your coil, which pulls it in. It literally does this, energize the coil, contact closes. de energize coil, contact opens on spring return is that simple you may need to know that it's on or off or closed you put auxiliary blocks on top of that for that and these go from this big which is probably about the smallest form factor i've seen um, for a three phase one up to i don't know about the size of a fucking shoe box get like massive thousand amp ones all the contact does is it allows you to switch a very large load with a very small load so a little tiny power spot here, one amp will switch a thousand easy peasy on the bigger one. So like say, they're used in any application where you want to switch a big load. So say you had a massive pump, but you want to control it with a light switch, you could do that with a contactor. Obviously, one of the most unique high power applications you like to see one of these in is your mum's dildo. Let me go through this control panel because it's quite interesting the way it works and it's quite simple, but it's quite different and you'll see what's going off. So let's look at the power. Three phase in neutral comes in, goes for an isolator goes out the isolator, comes up here, goes to the overload, goes into the overload, which provides protection for the motor, and goes out of the overload to these cables here, which is where the contact should live, and goes from these cables here, back out the terminals to the pump motor. Simple as that, so that's the power. In, isolator, overload, contactor, pump. Could not be simpler, easy peasy. But what's making this contactor work here, is all this other shit. So let's just have a quick look at that and see what that's doing. Just get an overall view of it as well. There are no drawings, so I did this. 101 on these auxiliary suppliers. 101, 102, 103, 104. So I look down here. There's 101, there's 102, there's 103, there's 104. I'm pointing because it's off. It's dead as fuck. Yeah, and I need to point the video because even though I shouldn't be, what am I doing? Use the screwdriver, you fucking cocksucker. I'm a cocksucker today. Yeah, that goes out on this flex. I identified that goes to a level instrument on one of the tanks. This one was out on another flex, I identified that goes to a level instrument on another tank. There's a third one, I identified that that goes to a heater, which left me with, there's no 104 here, that's because 104 comes out of there, and it ends up going into this common rail on these relays, and the 105 comes out of here, and goes to the contactor on a common rail. So what I worked out was any one of these relays pulling in will energise this contactor and make the pump run. So what's the nice little self-contained control system? It's self-contained the fact that the pump is run from here for its gubbins and the voltage is applied from here. But by applying 24 volts DC to these relays, which could be from a key switch in a mile away, from a key switch next to me, from a, the generator that's there, that's got a key switch in, yeah? So any one of these relays pulling in will energise this contactor. So this contactor... If this is 240 volt, switches this 240 volt through here and puts 240 volt to this contactor. Fine, that's great. So why does the contactor keep fucking blowing up? So the fault was that this breaker, the control con contact control breaker was tripping all the time. So it's not very complicated. It comes out of here, 
goes to this common bar, goes to this common bar, goes to this contactor. So there weren't much to go on, so I checked all the relays, then I checked this contactor and realised it was the contactor was blowing it, and then I thought, why is the contactor blowing it? That's not very common, it's only a simple mechanical coil. Then I look at it and realise that this contact is quite new. It's not very old, but it's had its fucking... You can move that with a screwdriver and obviously energise the coil mechanically. That's all chewed up to fuck, so I knew someone was bodging it. Then when I had a good look at it, I realised that... Focus you fuck. That's a 24 volt contactor. That's a 20, 240 volt supply. That is just blowing this up. Someone has chosen the wrong contactor, so this has never worked. And you come across this a lot. It's never, ever worked. Because this will not work with 240 volt. So why it's in there is anyone's guess. But it's not my problem, but it is now. So what you'll do is, you'll go to the people that use this panel, yeah, and you'll go, are you making that pump work? And they'll go, oh, we just pressed the button. And I know the fucking line, because the fucking contact is wrong. And I'll go, you aren't sprigging it with a screwdriver or you're bodging. They go, no, no, we're using the panel like we meant to go. And I could just say, go on then, do it. And they'll just pretend it doesn't work on that day. That is a prime case of getting called out to a job for a fault. That's never fucking worked. It's never worked. There's no way 240 volts AC has made a contact that's 24 volt DC work ever in the history of the world. That's always been blowing. Someone's been bodging that for a long time. And the question is, why don't anyone just say, don't work, and come out and fix it, won't it? But yeah, uh, always look around. Contact is very rarely break. Very simple mechanical process is required just to dunk that in. So it's either the wrong coil or the coil's down usually. All the contacts are worn out, it's a bit more common, but yeah. People swear blinds have been working when I know they're talking pure shit. Actual electrical content, but this day's actual electrical content is related to yesterday's actual electrical content about contactors. Don't worry if you missed that, I'll stick it all on YouTube as a wanna. But if you haven't seen yesterday's bit on contactors, this might seem quite confusing. So when you work in a control panel, you're gonna get various things going off here yeah, that are separate layers. One of them will be the mains, the power that provides the motor in the case of the one we're looking at to the pump and the protection for that pump. Also in the control panel, you'll have protection, you'll have control, and you might have instrumentation. So I'm just gonna look, compared to the contact panel that looks like yesterday, what's going off in that panel because there's something missing. So in the panels in yesterday, we had a feed to an isolator, yeah, then three phases to an overload, three phases to a contactor, three phases to a motor. So here, you've got isolation of the three phases coming in. Then you've got protection, because that overload has an overload setting that protects the motor, so it can't go have too much current going through it. So there's your protection. Then you've got three phases to your contactor. The contactor pulls in and out to turn the motor on and off. So you've got your isolation, your protection, your control. That's your mains assembly through those three phase dead easy always look something like that let's look at the control of the contact there because this don't pull itself in and out it needs something to tell it which is this also remember about this protection because this is protection for the motor we're going to come back to the protection later because what's protecting this tank just getting overfilled and fucking overflowing and covering the entire place with oil we'll come back to that as part of looking at this control i'm re-recording this now which is why i was a line here because i forgot to press the button hard enough so what we do is we take a a, we take a feed 240 volt feed off one of the phases put it through its own protection which is this mcb here so the control circuit's got some protection then we take it over here and do some control stuff with it then it comes back and feeds the contactor which pulls the contactor in and as i said earlier in the video i didn't record if i put a little link in here now power would come down there go down there go down there and make that contactor work yeah but we are interested in the control that's occurring over here to make this work because this is what we looked at yesterday. So that weren't there yesterday. So let's have a look on this side to see how in that control panel from yesterday's stories, it was controlled. So here we've got a load of relays, well, four relays in fact, and we've got a common rail. Here's this 240 volt in, which goes to all the commons, common, common, common. Then the speed to the contactor comes from a normally open contact on a common rail. These are called common rails, yeah? So if you engage this relay, it engages the contactor. If you engage this relay, it engages the contactor, and all of them do that. Any one of the relays will engage the contactor. Also, if you put this one on, and then put this one on, and take this one off, it will stay on. So all of them can be on, any number of them can be on. As long as at least one of them's on, it will engage the contactor on this common rail system. And that is so that you can have four different 24 volt feeds coming from four different bits of equipment that feed these contacts. So if you're in here and you put it on, it runs. If you're in here and you put it on, it runs. That could be a different voltage if you want. These could be any voltage you want because you're using the relays. But you can have four individual contacts to control this circuit. The problem seems to be if you apply 24 volts here, 
it then tells this contact to run, which runs this motor, which runs this pump, which sends oil to a tank. Now, if you engage that and this tank gets full, you need to stop it. So what there is is, within this panel, it's very simple, there's not a lot of control. There is control to bring the mains on, but there's no tank control. That's because the tank control is taken care of here in the engine via a PLC, which I'll now show you how that control functions. Get this paper now, do my tits in. Right, that's all physical. Now we're going to look at some logic in a computer, in a PLC, and see why that pump won't work when I got there, amongst other things, but what makes that logic work and why that logic's there. Because we're concerned here that when you turn the key switch and engage that pump, you can overfill a tank and piss oil everywhere. So what stops you doing that is the logic, and the logic is controlling the computer. I will show you now. I don't know if you heard the computers, they're gonna be a big thing. I better screenshot this because I can't be showing you around our internal company systems, yeah? So basically this side, these are sort of like input -y type things. These are situations that have got to be active, and this is the result over here. So you see over there, look, the result is that we run the clean oil pump and we open the clean oil valve. However, these things in the middle that need to happen, yeah? This is called logic. And over here, we've got one called make up fill, which is a key switch. So I'm me now, wait there. So over here, we've got make up fill. That's a switch that lets the pump run. That the, the wee switch to think the pump will run. Then we've got the clean oil pump is selected. So when you turn this and the clean oil pump is selected, both of these will be go positive. This is an, an AND gate, this one. If that's on or that's on, no, sorry, it's an AND gate. That and that being on will make this go out. So if the clean oil is selected and the key is pressed and they're both on and they are both on, this becomes active and it will get to here. Yeah, hold that thought. So that's the manual operation of it. You'll see this one here is an OR gate. So that or that can make it work. So if, oop, if it's an OR gate, so as well as that being on then, when they're both active, it comes out there and gets this OR gate and if the fresh oil pump is available, that'll come on. We've got one here, oil makeup low, that goes up there. And basically, what you have is a series of and or or gates where that would mean that and that's got to be available. That one means that or that's got to be available, one out of the two. Then we've got an and, then we've got an and, then we've got some delay timers. And eventually, the product of all this, this safety features are is that the signal will get through and it'll get to there. So the clean oil pump will come on. So the effect is that when the clean oil pump comes on, it'll run. But then when the oil tank goes high, this will fail, which means 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 the tank will go off. So even though the pump is pumping, when it's full, this goes, this stops, and you can't overfuel the tank. And that's where all the protection is done. There's all sorts of there's safety, there's whether the tank's low or high, whether the pump's selected. All these add to the party so you can make sure loads of things are applicable before you run the pump. And if any of those applicable things disappear, you stop it. I appreciate that's not the best explanation, but the theory is there. I am working on some PLC stuff and I'm going to put out some PLC resource so you can have a go at that yourself. So uh, bear with me. That's a little taste of what's to come because logic is everywhere. It's like fucking, it's going to be massive, I'm telling you.